We're in that transition period in the garden where fall crops need to go in the garden, but the summer crops are still hanging on. And sometimes it's hard to decide what to take out, what to leave, especially when you need garden space for those fall crops. Today, I'm gonna to share with you how I flipped this bed not completely because you still see some summer crops in here, but I flipped this bed from purely a summer garden to a hybrid of summer crops and fall crops to get ready for these fall crops to take over when the season fully transitions. The first thing I had to do was make room for the new fall crops, and that was not an easy decision to make. I had to look at my garden and see what spots were already available, which honestly wasn't all that many but then also take a hard look at what I wanted to keep and what honestly I could take out. I decided to zero in on this particular bed because it had six pepper plants in the bed that I really wasn't harvesting from all that much or I had already gotten all of the harvest that I needed. On one side, on the right side of that bed was three banana pepper plants. I had planted those because both my husband and my son love pickled banana peppers and they were super productive. I had canned and pickled so many banana peppers, I was done. I just started giving them away. So I thought, you know, I can definitely use this space for a fall crop. On the other side, I had three other types of specialty peppers. One of them was a Avjarski, I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's supposed to be a really flavorful bell pepper that when it ripens to red, it's supposed to be delicious, which it was fine, but I'm not sure that I noticed it any better than the other bell peppers that I have. So I decided to go ahead and take that out because of the space. The middle pepper was one that I have loved for a long time called the sweet pickle pepper absolutely beautiful but it also grills really nicely but frankly we really hadn't used those peppers much this year so i knew i wouldn't miss that and then finally i had the shishito pepper i grew the shishito for the first time this year because everybody raves about how delicious shishito peppers are and they were i picked them and we had them as sort of an appetizer slash side a couple of times this year and they were really good but they were good for you know those two times and i was good with letting it go so I harvested all the peppers that I could, and then I had to make a decision on the other crops in that garden, specifically the tomatoes. I had two tomato plants planted in that space. They produced really well all year, but as you can see, they've kind of gotten a little spindly and not super flourishing. I've had to do a lot of trimming of disease on those this year. So I decided to keep them mainly because they were still producing just a little bit, which I don't really need a lot of tomatoes anyway. And because there wasn't a whole lot of foliage left on those, I knew that I wouldn't have any issue with them shading the fall crops. Those fall crops are going to need a lot of sun and I figured I could keep the tomatoes there without any problem. You also can see a basil plant that I decided to keep. This is a new variety of basil that I've never tried before, but it's called Everleaf Basil. And it's a variety that's bred not to go to flower. I've absolutely loved this. I've been able to have basil all season long. I really only needed one plant, even though I've got like three or four in the garden. No, for next year. But I got that from Botanical Interests and absolutely love it. I'm going to keep that in my garden in the future just to be able to continually have basil all season long. Keeping the tomato plants and the basil plants, but then taking out the pepper plants left me two rows to be able to plant broccoli. Now I had already gone through the process of hardening them off. I started these from seed indoors. I took them outside for small amounts of time each day for about a week. And then it came time to plant about August 31st. I ended up planting these on a cool day, which worked out perfectly because the week before it was way too hot to plant. But before I planted, I needed to get the bed ready. And to do that, what I did is I went to get some compost. This particular compost is bulk compost that I buy from my local landscaping company, but I could have used my homemade compost here as well. But I wanted to add that compost, not only to enrich the soil, but also to top off or level out a little bit more the soil that had compacted over the season. Now, the challenge that I came to when I did this is that since I have those tomato cages on top of the garden grid, I had a hard time getting the garden grid up with because those tomato cages were pinning them down. But when I added the compost, I wanted to keep the garden grid on top of the compost. But I kind of made it work by gently, after I put the compost on there, I gently lifted those cages up to give the garden grids more space to come 
up. So that worked out fine. But the whole point is that I want to add compost, but I also want to bring the garden grid up. If you're not familiar with the garden grid, you'll see it in action in just a minute. But that's my irrigation system for my raised beds. I absolutely love it. After I added compost, then I started the process of planting the broccoli. And if you're curious what varieties that I'm planting in this particular bed, on the north side, which is the right side when you're looking at this, I'm planted green magic and jacaranda. Now, normally I like to plant broccoli about 18 inches apart just because broccoli grows really large. But the jacaranda broccoli is a more compact variety. I grew it in the spring. It's a purple broccoli that's absolutely gorgeous, but it is more compact. So because of that, I planted three green magic and then in between the green magic, I planted jacaranda in between. Hopefully I'm not going to be upset with myself for squeezing five plants in there, but I had more seeds that actually came, uh, came up and were thriving. And that's something that you have to do sometimes when you start your own seed is figure out, okay, I have all these extra plants that I planted for redundancy sake and now have to figure out where to put them. But that's what I did on that right side. On the left side, I'm planting a variety called Emerald Crown. And this is a new variety for me, but I've heard really good things about it. A lot of people that I trust grow it and they grow it well specifically in the fall. But I did the same thing with Emerald Crown as I did with the Green Magic, which has been my staple for many years. That's that's the crop that made me believe in growing broccoli again because it, it has done so well. But in between the Emerald Crown, I put Jacaranda as well with the whole point of, again, being able to have regular sized emerald crown, but then also the more compact jacaranda. And then just having the bicolor of the, of the green broccoli mixed in with the purple broccoli heads. I just love the beauty of that. So that's why I chose those particular varieties in this bed. As I planted, you notice that I'm dipping the root ball into something that is organic rev. I mix it usually half and half roughly with water. And then I dip the root ball into that before I plant it. Of course, I water the planting hole just to make sure that there's plenty of moisture for the roots to be able to access. But Organic Rev, I have found, has made a big difference in the establishment, especially of these transplants, and especially in the summer when it's still pretty hot. These are cool season crops, but this is something that I started doing several years ago, and I've seen a huge difference. And that's why, if you see that, that's what I'm doing. After I planted, I wanted to get the insect netting on as soon as possible. I had already found one cabbage worm on one of my transplants that obviously had made it there whenever I was hardening off my seedlings. And then I also saw a cabbage moth fluttering around like, okay, I'm, I'm ready, get to planting, I'll lay my babies here. So I wanted to get the insect netting on as quickly as possible. The hoops that I'm using are from Gardener Supply. And then I, the insect netting I got from Amazon along with the clips. And I've used that insect netting for several years. It's done really well for me. Once I got all of that secured as well as I could, then it was time to add some shade cloth. And this was really important, partly because I was planting in the middle part of the morning, which is probably the worst time to plant a fall garden when it's hot. Thankfully, it really wasn't hot that day or I, I would have definitely planted in the evening. Evening is a better choice, but it just happened to be that that's when I had time to do it. But shade cloth was going to definitely help to make it where these broccoli seedlings weren't just shocked with all that sun and while they're trying to make the transition into the garden. The side that you see the shade cloth mostly draped on is on the south side and the other side is on the north side and it was able to get a little dappled shade from that shade cloth and also from some of the tomatoes as well. But I only kept the shade cloth on off and on for about a week. If it was a cool day or if it was a cloudy day, I would take the shade cloth off altogether. And then eventually I would take it off in the morning and then shade them in the afternoon when it got really hot and then eventually take it off because this time of year, sun is at a premium. So I have learned and I've, I've done kind of some, some off the cuff trial and error here. I have learned that once these broccoli plants get established, then they are going to do so much better with full sun as soon as I can get that shade cloth off the better. But it was definitely something that I wanted to do right off the bat. Now, one thing that I was noticing as these plants were acclimating, and I didn't take a video of this, I just took care of it, was a couple of times the broccoli was wilty in the heat of the day. Not all of them, but just one or two. And that's not uncommon, but I was checking and the soil was not moist. 
What I had failed to do was I had had my irrigation on a timer for my summer crops and I was watering them every three days at a deep water, which is really good for plants that are established. But for plants that you're just planting, they need to be watered more frequently than that and for a shorter period of time. So once I changed that frequency to every day and I had the garden in minutes garden grids on every morning for a shorter period of time, I think I did like 15 minutes maybe, then they didn't have that problem at, at all. They continued to grow and they didn't wilt at all. So that was my mistake by not double checking the timer, which I think putting your irrigation on the timer is the best decision ever, but it also makes it easy for you to be lazy and forget to check things like that. But once I did get all that dialed in, the broccoli plants were starting to grow and thrive. One thing I forgot to mention that I also planted in this bed underneath the tomatoes, I started planting beet seeds and that was more of just an extra planting. I had already planted some beets in my green stock, but I thought I had that extra space, especially since the tomato plants weren't shading too much. So I planted those seeds. We'll see how they end up doing, but that's another goal is to have that broccoli and beets in this same bed, especially as uh, the summer crops start coming out. Here we are 10 days later, and as you can see, the shade cloth is completely off. We have fully transitioned into the fall crops right here. The broccoli has taken off. It is doing fantastic. And I have seen a couple of beet seedlings poke up. I'm still kind of waiting on those. But so far, this transition has been a success. We'll just see how much longer the tomatoes last. I keep getting one tomato here and there, but as you can see, it's definitely not casting enough shade to cause a problem. The shade you see here is from one of my green stalks that's still hooked up to my water feature, so I couldn't move it so you could see that. So I hope you can get an idea of what all this looks like. But this is how I transition my garden from summer to fall enabling some of those summer crops to stay in there for as long as they can. And then once the frost comes, obviously the tomatoes will come out and the basil will be gone. And then these crops can fully take over as we head into the winter. Now, if you wanna learn more about transitioning your garden from summer to fall, we just did a live workshop and you can catch the replay. We'll put the link in the description or you can go to journeywithjill.net slash summerfall to get a full detail on how exactly to decide where to plant your crops, especially when it comes to sunlight how to protect them from pests, from heat, and then from cold so that you can have a promise of a great fall and winter harvest yourself. I hope you're having a great fall season in the garden. I will be sharing another video with you next month, but in the meantime, be sure to check out the Beginner's Garden podcast where I post these podcast episodes here on YouTube every single week, or you can catch them in your favorite podcasting player. I'll catch you next time.